after the Babylonian captivity, 70 years of Babylonian captivity, when Judah was coming back from Babylon, it was a lot like Israel coming back from Egypt. If you've been watching my channel for any length of time, you know that we often draw parallels here to the journey from Egypt to the Promised Land. In both cases, they were slaves in a foreign land. Slaves in Egypt, slaves in Babylon. In both cases, God did everything necessary to free them. And in both cases, they were at the beginning of their journey with God. Quite weak and needed to be strengthened. Now, when I say they were at the beginning of their journey with God. If you look at that the wrong way, you're going to think that I'm wrong. But we'll get back to that in just a second here. Now in the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, that the word of the Lord, spoken by the mouth of Jeremiah, might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus, king of Persia, so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing, saying, So there you see that the Lord stirred up Cyrus's heart to write up a proclamation. And the long and short of it is, is that proclamation says, uh, Judah's free, and we're going to do everything we can do to help them build their temple. So up until this point, Judah had been in captivity for 70 years. That's at least a few generations. So when I say they, I'm not referring to they as in Judah as a group from Egypt because then I would be wrong but what I'm referencing here is they as in the actual people who are coming out of the promised land with, uh, with many of them they had seen the Babylonian captivity their entire lives they've never stepped foot into the promised land they were in the very beginning of their relationship with the Lord as a result of them being in the very beginning of their relationship with God, God had a lot of strengthening and building of faith to do in his loved ones. Now, there's a lot of reading between the lines in this lesson, but I assure you that I'm not taking, uh, I, sorry, <laughs> I am reading between the lines of this book. I'm not taking some erroneous source and bringing in facts from that source and stitching it in to your sacred time with God. Okay, to learn this lesson, this lesson of strengthening, let's focus on the aggravations that they faced in trying to achieve their goal. What was the goal? The goal was to build the temple. Now in the second month of the second year of their coming to the house of God at Jerusalem, Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, Jeshua, the son of Jozadak, and the rest of their brethren, the priests and the Levites, and all those who had come out of the captivity to Jerusalem, began work and appointed the Levites from 20 years old and above to oversee the work of the house of the Lord. This is an explanation of them beginning the building of God's house, of the temple. They were doing this even though they were afraid. This is the first little hint towards this strengthening lesson. They were afraid. God tells us, he commands us not to be afraid. But we all start out afraid, so we're going to be afraid. That's just how it is. But this their being afraid shows us that they are weak and they need to be strengthened. They lack faith and they need faith built up inside of them. As it says in scripture, from faith to faith. Though fear had come upon them, the Jews, because of the people of those countries, they set the altar on its bases and they offered burnt offerings on it to the Lord, both the morning and evening burnt offerings. Okay, so here we are with the people. They've come out of the captivity. They're building the temple. And they're starting to do the sacrifices necessary for the temple. And they're afraid of what the other nations will do. Yet, they continue on anyway. And here, unfortunately, 
is where the aggravations, the first set of aggravations come. We call them hurdles on the way to the finish line, which is a built temple. Now when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the descendants of the captivity were building the temple of the Lord God of Israel, they came to Zerubbabel and the heads of the father's houses and said to them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God as you do. And we have sacrificed to him since the days of Esarhaddon, king of Assyria, who brought us here. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the heads of the father's houses of Israel said to them, You may do nothing with us to build a house for our God, but we alone will build to the Lord God of Israel, as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. And the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Eventually, Judah's adversaries wrote a letter to King Artaxerxes after Cyrus had died. And this letter caused the king Artaxerxes to command them to cease the building of the temple. Right here is where we see the second shimmer of this lesson of strengthening. Think about it. This king Artaxerxes commanding them to cease building. If you think about it in the right light, it seems absolutely ludicrous. Some foreign king telling this other nation that they're not allowed to build a building to their own God in their own nation. That sounds ludicrous, doesn't it? Well, because the people of Judah were weak and not yet strengthened, instead of it being ludicrous, it was inevitable. But, as for all circumstances involving God's true people, the tables do turn. Then the prophet Haggai and Zechariah, the son of Edo, prophets, prophesied to the Jews who were in Judah and Jerusalem in the name of the God of Israel, who was over them. So Zerubbabel, the son of Shealtiel, and Jeshua, the son of Jozadak, rose up and began to build the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. And the prophets of God were with them, helping them. At the same time, Tatsanei, the governor of the region beyond the river, and Shethar Bazanei, and their companions came to them and spoke thus to them. Who has commanded you to build this temple and finish this wall? Then, accordingly, we told them the names of the men who were constructing this building. But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews, so that they could not make them cease till a report could go to Darius. Then a written answer was returned concerning this matter. This is a copy of the letter that Tatanei sent. To shorten the length of this video and to encourage you to go home and read your darn Bible, I'm just going to tell you that that letter and then the subsequent letter spelled victory for the Jews. Yes! Hallelujah! But let's not get sidetracked and let's stay focused on the goal of this video, the lesson of strength. At the beginning of all this, Judah was able to build the foundation of the temple because God had stirred up the heart of Cyrus. Then, they were relying on Cyrus's authority. This king, that's where their strength was coming from. But when Cyrus died, they were helpless. They couldn't do anything. Now, Here's where we read between the lines. And it's not far-fetched at all. It's just really obvious. Um, just like if I were to say that uh, King Cyrus breathed oxygen and probably ate lunch on a regular basis. It's not written into scripture. It's just kind of part of pattern recognition. And the pattern recognition here goes a little bit deeper than breathing oxygen and eating lunch. Here we're going to recognize that when these people were in this circumstance, these people being the Jews, were in this circumstance where some foreign king had exercised his authority over them, and when push came to shove, they listened to him, 
has probably put them in a circumstance where they recognize that the potential for them being taken captive again was very real. That would have at least been something that they thought was possible and maybe worried about. This kind of an atmosphere is the kind of an atmosphere that brings people close to God. And when you really truly get close to God, He does strengthen you. If you, my friend, are in a circumstance where you're feeling unloved or where you're feeling like the authority of the world around you is caving in on you and things just seem hopeless, reach out to God with an understanding that there will be many seasons of strengthening necessary if you're going to continue in a righteous relationship with God. It is difficult, but I promise it's worth it. So with the people of Judah being in this circumstance where they're being driven closer to God out of necessity, they did get strengthened. And as a result of them becoming stronger and more faithful, God's eye was on them. But the eye of their God was upon the elders of the Jews so that they could not make them cease building till a report could go to Darius. That is not how it went the previous time. The previous time they came and said, hey, you need to stop. Okay, we'll stop. But later on, after some strengthening, not only did they not stop when they came to tell them to stop and continued in faith, waiting for a decree from Darius, when the decree from Darius came, it spelled victory for the Jews. So even though threats were being breathed down their necks and the whole world seemed to be against them, in the end, the temple was built and a stronger Judah met daily with a very pleased Lord. Thank you for watching this video. If you thought it was neat, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, why not? And if you like this video so darn much that you want to share it with your friends, there should be a button down below somewhere that says share, and you can copy it and text it to anybody that you'd like, that you think might enjoy being strengthened by God, our Creator. There should be a few videos popped up on the screen by now, and if you'd like to watch another quick video, easy to digest, filled with love and creative knowledge from the scriptures, go ahead and click on one of those videos. It really helps the channel out a lot. Thanks, and enjoy. Shalom.